Ciao An, selamat pagi, assalamualaikum everyone and good morning. Welcome to our weekly Diva Romas cooking show with me, Daphne Iking, and I'm so so excited today because normally I'm gonna I cook like Western food or like some uh, typical Malay uh, Malay food, but this time around I'm gonna go into some food that I personally like. The food that I'm familiar with, all right? And I'm gonna not going to be alone today. I'm actually going to be with an invited guest who's someone very dear to me. And then when I asked her, actually, um, hey, do you know how to cook Chinese food? Because I assume she's Chinese, right? And she said, uh, not really, uh, not really. I'm like, wait a minute, but you're like Chinese. So guys, more of the story is do not assume, okay? Do not assume what's what until you actually get to know a situation or a person better, alright? Jadi hari ini sebenarnya tajuk dia Mang Mang Sik. Apa sebenarnya maksud Mang Mang Sik ni? I found out after digging deep with my guests that it means Bon Appetit, if you're familiar with that, atau Selamat Menjamu Selera, or Have a Good Meal, okay? So Mang Mang Sik means that and that's the reason why we chose our title for today because I thought, of it, I think it sort of encompasses what our meal will be for today, right? So, do stay tuned all the way to the show because I've got two contests running. One is for my very own Diva Romas, my Divas partners, and you stand a chance to win a 450 ml thermo jug. Okay, this thermo jug is the bomb because when you're preparing steak and you want your Bernays sauce to be nice and hot, you can just put it inside and then you can pour it in when it's time for you to prepare, like eat your meal, right? Or anything else. Um, it's, it's perfect for that. Um, this is the 450 ml one and you stand a chance to win that. But you have to stay tuned all the way to the end of the show and make sure that you've got your invited guests to come and watch the show and to comment, Hi, I'm, for instance, Hi, I'm I'm Anis and my advisor is Daphne Iking. So that's something that they will have to put on the comment, whether you're watching it over Facebook, over YouTube, over Instagram. Okay, Instagram's gonna be a little bit tough because later on it will disappear. But then advisors who do invite your family or friends to watch this show, then you can just quickly screenshot it so that I've got proof. Okay, mommy pony garang sikit tau. Kita nak pastikan ku tengok dari awal sampai habis because why? Because why? Because I love you all and I want to see that everyone will enjoy this cooking experience because it's going to be fun, 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 right? So, another thing is for viewers at home, if you listen all the way, I will give you the question also for the contest and two lucky winners will walk home. Well, not really walk home, I'll post it to you guys. The Norwex Enviro cloth, which is the everything cloth, it is the essential microfiber cloth that you can use in your household, be it in the kitchen or in the bedroom or bathroom, it is the perfect cloth for your cleaning needs. Okay, so I've got two to be given away. So that's about it. Now I'm gonna be introducing my guest. Um, her name is Vicky. I think some of you may be familiar with her, if, especially if you um, are a Thermomix Malaysia user, sales advisor, so she's the Vicky that I'm talking about. Some of you may not know how she looks like. Well, I will show you how she looks like in just a bit, okay? So she is the business development manager for Thermomix Malaysia. And she used to have a restaurant called Red Clement Clementine. 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 She'll correct me later on. And um, it actually serves. When I heard about it, right? I thought, hmm, yeah, that's the reason why she can cook Chinese food because got red, ma, got the red, the ong ong one, huh? And then I found out actually it's Western fusion dishes that she served. It's no longer operating, but now she's with the Mummix Malaysia. And I would like to invite her now on the show. So, hello, good morning, Chao An, Vicky Chen. Hi, Chao An. Ngama, chào anh này, betul lah, cek cek up. And then, ni hao ma? Then hao, ni hao ma? Hao, pu hao. Actually, I've got like um swollen jaw. So to viewers at home, if you think I sound a bit slurry, it's only because it's a little bit bengka. I had like a last minute uh, tooth extraction, but I'm healing and I'm recovering well. Okay, so Vicky, first and foremost, how are you? And thank you for joining me on this show. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm good here. I'm really excited to share what I'm going to be cooking today. Now, when I asked you that question over WhatsApp, I said, hey, you can do uh, Chinese cooking. And you went like, uh, you're a bit hesitant. And, and, and I said, but you're Chinese, you know, because don't assume. But then that's what I assumed. And you're like 60% 60, 60 Chinese? 60% Chinese. So where's the other 40% genetic pool, y'all? Um, I, I would say... Well, because I, I used to study overseas and I like traveling, so I adapt and I adopt all the other um, cultures. So I would say I'm 40% international and of mm. course I'm 
Malaysian as well, so I also have all the other cultures in me. <laughs> Is that fair? That's cool. That sounds cool. I like it. I like your description of how you're 60% Chinese and 40% international. Aren't we all? Well, most of us are. We're all a mixture of everything else, aren't we? All right, so let's get right to it, Vicky. What are we preparing first and foremost? Um, I, I'm preparing two kinds of, well, Chinese-based desserts and drink. The first one is a red date milk. So for Chinese, we, we like red dates because it helps with the blood circulation and it's good for the body, right? Especially for ladies, it's recommended to have like a red date and goji berry drink in the morning or during the day. And the other one is walnuts and black sesame. So, mm. well, in my family, at least we think that the, the walnut, it looks like brain, right? So it's, it's good for brains. And then for the black sesame, it's really good for hair. So it's beauty and a brain drink. Ooh, nice. But is it real for like the walnut is good for your brains or only because it looks like a brain? I do think it's good for the brains, yeah. I think so try so. it, but try it. Yeah. No? Okay. Yes. So we're going to make your red date milk drink first, right? Which is highly nutritious. Yes. Over to you. Yeah. Yes. So this recipe is available in um, this Tasty Asia cookbook. And it's really simple. So what we're going to do is we have some pumpkin seeds. I'm just going to pop in the pumpkin seeds. Some red dates. some milk so this is fresh milk and if you're not a big fan of red dates you can actually replace it with medjool dates and if you're lactose intolerant well it's it's good to replace it with some non-dairies like soy milk almond milk and you know soy milk can easily be done in this mix so it's really simple. What we're going to do is just blend it for one minute. And that's what I'm going to do. Just one minute over here, adjust the time. And then I'm just going to blend it at speed 10. So it's going to get like really loud and fast. Okay. And it sounds like an aeroplane taking off. And I think it's almost done. It's as fast as that. Again, guys, for the red date milk with pumpkin seeds, you can use Chinese red dates or kurma, then fresh milk, or you can replace it with either soy milk or almond milk, which you can also make with your Thermomix, and a bit of pumpkin seeds. Just put it all in, and then you just blend it, all right, for about a minute on speed 10. There you go. Another 17 more mi uh, seconds. And I'm so glad that Vicky is actually doing this with me because um, <laughs> I was so worried about doing this alone. Oh, it's done. Five. I can't hear you. Oh, she. I think she muted it because the um, blender is too noisy, I think. There you go. Yeah, did you hear anything? Yay! I can hear your sound of your... What's your name of your Thermomix? Because I name my Mo. Do it's called Mr. T. Oh, Mr. T. Nice. Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is how it looks like. See? Okay. Nice. And this is something they can just keep in the fridge? Drink it first? Yes. Oh, you're going to pass? What? The... Well, in Chinese tradition, it is important that we serve the more senior one first so i'm gonna like serve it to you with two hands there can you are you gonna like have it wow. can you receive it wow i don't know why my glass suddenly became smaller because it had to travel through the camera <laughs> wow thank you very much know, yes right? yeah so i'm gonna try out your red date pumpkin seed drink mm. oh this is lovely have some for yourself vicky yeah Cheers. Cheers. All right. You know what, Vicky, just continue talking for a while. I'm just going to pop over to where yeah. I'm supposed to start off with my dish and I'll see you in a bit or you can just hang about because then I'm going to continue. And then later on, I know you need to clean your mixing bowl for your next dish, right? 
So just continue yes, talking first are. until Joe says, sure. all right, Vicky, Daphne's ready. Okay, I'll see you. Bye. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have the red date milk, right? As mentioned just now, if you're not a big fan of red dates, you can actually replace the date with medjool dates, which I really like. I chose medjool because it is thick. It has a lot of flesh. It's really sweet and it's got lots of fibers, which I really like. So medjool dates is one of my favorites and it will taste naturally sweet. So no sugar needed. And if you're not a fan of milk, just change it with soy milk. And did you know that soy milk is really very easy to be made in the Thermomix? Just soak the beans overnight and then put it in there. It will cook and it will blend for you. So I've tried it and I really like it. And two ways to go about it. So either I sieve it, you know, I tap this, I tap this, and then um, I drink it. Or I don't have this at all. I just all right, blend Vicky. It. I am ready right yeah. here as I prepare my cabbage stew, chicken, ginger, uh, chicken, ginger, chicken, ginger, chicken, as well as my drunken prawns. And I'm getting my recipe from this. Um, hold on, let me just try and take it out. Here you go. Wow. From the three-in-one cooking. So I am going to attempt to make this for the first time live. Um, this gab cabbage stew, chicken, chicken, as well as drunken prawns. But what I've done in advance is for the um, in uh, interest of time is that I've already prepared the uh, ginger chicken in advance, okay? And it, it smells so delicious. It basically has um, ginger, it has salt, water, garlic, oyster sauce, uh, sesame oil, as well as some, thank you. All right as well as some spring onion, okay, which I'm going to put use to garnish in just a bit. So before that, uh, so that's that, and I'm going to prepare it in this. Eh. Okay. And, yang macam ni? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to place the um, chicken that I've already prepared in advance onto this steaming plate. Thank you, Belle. And then, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prepare the prawns because whilst my cabbage stew is cooking, I will be steaming the chicken ginger, which smells so heavenly. And for a lot of Chinese cooking, we use a lot of ginger. And this is something that I always take during my confinement because it gives the body some heat. Although I would advise pregnant, I mean postpartum mums to um, not take too much ginger, especially if their baby is still with jaundice, because apparently it's too heaty for the child. So I prepared this already and I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to put it onto my Varoma set over here. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is prepare the drunken prawns. So I've got my prawns already sort of uh, removed the whiskers and um, I've also deveined it. And I'm going to macam susun dia elok elok, cantik cantik macam ni. My kids aren't very familiar with Chinese cooking um, simply because they they simply because they are so used to eating your typical Malayu or Western cooking. But I said, you know what, just because they're so used to that, it doesn't mean that I have to, you know, let go of food that I like. You know, I love, love, love cooking uh, Chinese meals because they're just so much more easier. You just steam them or you make them into soups. So in this case, I think this is something that the children and I will be able to compromise in terms of taste and texture. Um, so I've prepared that. So I first place the steaming, uh, steaming plate with the prawns. I've done that. Okay, now I'm going to add in the pitted red dates. So you know what Vicky said earlier on, red dates is really, really good because it's something that helps with your blood circulation. And again, those in confinement, mothers in confinement, normally eat all these really nutritious food because they need to recover and heal. But there's no, there's no um, right or wrong about you having to eat this. Like this is like really confinement food. Uh, most, most of us would eat this for confinement. Well, at least I did. And uh, there's no right or wrong just eating it masa you dalam pantang. 
um, you can eat it as an everyday meal and introduce it to your kids who aren't familiar. So it's now time for them to get familiar because my children do have Chinese roots inside them. So it's time for them to discover, rediscover a bit of their culture inside them, okay? And then what we're going to do is we are going to add in some salt, okay, which I'm going to put in there. And then I'm going to add in the... What else do I need? Red dates. Oh, yes. The goji berries, which is good for your eyes. And also it adds a nice bit of colour to the dish. Goji. Yeah. So that's about a teaspoon. If you hear some Godzilla sounds, it's because my son decided to just join us and start playing with his Godzilla or King Kong or whatever that is. This is it. Just in case, so that you're not like wondering, what, what is that? Is this? Yeah, so earlier on, I'm going to flash on the screen the ginger, uh, ginger chicken ingredients. Again, you can find it in this cookbook called Three in One Cooking. And at the same time, I'm also preparing my drunken prawns. Okay, next, what do I have to do? Okay, now I have to add in about ooh, a bit of Chinese rice wine. This is making its debut, Vicky, today. Vicky actually introduced me to this brand and it smells so delicious. Again, when for me, when I went through my Chinese confinement, I had a lot of um, rice wine, which my mother makes, and it was good also for blood circulation, and just a bit is enough, so I'm going to just add in 50 ml. Do you know that this is also the measuring cup? It is the measuring cup. And it also covers the lid of your Thermomix uh, mixing bowl lid. And I am going to put in about half of it, just because I don't want my kids to macham, macham, uh, what is this mama, what is this? Okay, and then I'm going to just pour it into this whole concoction here. I'm also going to add ginger, do I have to add ginger now? Like I said, this is the first time that I'm doing it live. Yes, darling? I want to watch TV. You can't watch TV here. You have to watch downstairs. There's so many other TVs and you want to watch it here when I'm doing my cooking show. Well done. Put in a bit of ginger again. Ginger is great for circulation and heating up the body. And it's also great if you have constipation, you can Okay, so that is done. Now I'm going to prepare my cabbage stew so place a bowl onto a mixing bowl weigh in water i've got water here add in dried shrimp and dried scallops to the bowl set aside okay that's done place garlic clove into the mixing bowl i've got two cloves of garlic and then i'm gonna now i'm gonna do the cabbage stew okay so we will also flash the recipe for the cabbage stew in just a bit five seconds chop five seconds speed five all right so this is the time Temperature as well as the speed. So we're going to go in with five seconds. Oops. Five seconds. It's always a little bit tricky when I want to do my TTS or time temperature speed from behind the Thermomix. My TM6. Okay. And then on speed five. So we're going to chop it. So one to four is about mixing, five to seven is about chopping and then when it goes a little bit higher in speed then that's when you're doing a blend with this uh, Thermomix 6, TM6, okay. And then I'm going to scrape the sides down. After that, I need to add in the cooking oil which I've also pre-weighed everything in advance. This Thermomix also has the scales which is actually located and the feet of its uh, the unit so you want to always carry your thermomix do you don't want to be dragging it so I've got about 20 grams of garlic oil. no sorry 20 grams of cooking oil which I'm going to pour in and then I am going to saute it for about four minutes okay at 120 Celsius Okay, so four minutes. There's two ways about uh, going about. You can actually do it like touch screen, or you can also, I'll show you in a bit, 120. You can also press on the dial and to go to the next um, circle. So this is going to be how many? So this would be speed spoon. So there's spoon, 
which has a little icon of a spoon there. So that's four minutes um, that I'm going to be waiting until it is done with the sautéing. So earlier on, I had actually used, instead of um, any normal, normal cooking oil, like vegetable oil that you normally do to goreng goreng, um, I use olive oil. And the good thing about using the Thermomix is that it has perfect temperature always. So it has like uh, a set temperature for different meal preps. In this case, uh, 120 to saute it and it won't overburn because the thing about olive oil is it's healthy, it's great, but if you use it in a conventional wok and then it'll overheat, it's actually toxic for you. So in this case, because it, it sustains that temperature of 120 Celsius all the time, it will be still nutritious for the food that you're preparing or you're cooking, okay? So again, this is a recipe that I'm doing. It's a three course feast. I've already prepared my rice in advance. So later on, once the show is over, then I can terus makan sama anak-anak saya. Ini pagi, well, pagi afternoon of Saturday. Mm. So again, for those of you who've just joined us, please do stay tuned, especially to my Divaroma sales advisors. Make sure you invite your guests, your family and friends to watch the show. Ask them to comment below and say, hi, I'm so-and-so and my advisor is Anis or whoever the advisor is who has invited you to the show make sure you screenshot that this is only for my diva romas because you stand a chance to win a thermomix thermo jug which is great for keeping your sauces and liquids hot or cold depending on the meal preparation uh, and uh, as and when you need it okay and i'll be sharing with you how you can answer the questions that i will give later on on the show once this is over and to those at home you know you also stand a chance to win a norwex microfiber enviro cloth which is personally my favorite it is my first norwex cloth and um, i'm saying this because i just love the brand i love how it helps clean the fact that the thermomix as well as my other love which is norwex goes hand in hand because i'm someone that likes to keep things clean and organized and with the thermomix as you notice i'm doing this in the comfort of my living room earlier on you saw vicky who was probably in her bedroom if I'm not mistaken but yeah we're cooking can you imagine cooking in your living room or cooking in your bedroom something that would have been like really or like mind-blowing right because of the fact that it cooks in this mixing bowl everything is done within this whole unit it has 24 features which I will go into and elaborate more in um, later on um, there's no cooking fumes so you can smell the food but it won't like stick onto your hair or your baju so then you know like when I'm making my rundown for an hour and I can just be there or you know I'll, I'll leave it to just to miss or do what it has to do and then one hour I can get my makeup done I can get some cleaning down I can spend some quality time with my kids I don't have to be like hovering next to the stove and then sampai ke tiap palo because you're like make sure, making sure that you're stirring it so that it tidak terbakar senapa wabah boleh punya buntut kan uh, so uh, that's the reason why I personally love the Thermomix and it's so much easier to clean. Plus, it has a cleaning mode. So if you are kneading dough or you are caramelizing sugar or you are browning your meat, sometimes it leaves a bit of oil, like when you're making tumis, right? Your sambal. You can actually clean your mixing bowl and it does like almost 90% of the cleaning job for you. They've got the different cleaning modes, methods inside, which I can actually, maybe I can because it's, yeah, I can show it to you. So, uh, it's here, pre-clean. Oh, I can't do it now because obviously it's still cooking. But this is how you sort of navigate through your home screen where you get all the other features, about 24 and still counting of the other auto modes that the Thermomix has, okay, the TM6. So, it has a pre-clean, it has dough, universal, browning as well as... I think it's sugar stages. See? Tok, 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 dah habis dah. Okay, so now that is done. I have to insert my butterfly whisk. Now, the trick on using or putting on your butterfly whisk, which is great for consistent stirring um, at a slow pace, uh, but to ensure that your barang-barang dalam dia tak terbakar lah, dia tak terbrown dekat bawah to the base kan, is when you want to insert your butterfly whisk, look for the highest blade of your mixing knife and then put it on the left. It doesn't lock per se, but you can just sort of like main macam main macam ni lebah, main gelgelik gitu, gelgelik kan? And it should be um, set in place there. It doesn't lock, but that should set it right. So again, it's the highest blade of your mixing knife. Put it on the left side of it and just give it a little nice, um, you know, just just fit it in, place it in. 
So I've inserted the butterfly whisk. Now I'm adding in my uh, dried shrimp and dried scallops, which is here. And I've already rinsed it in advance. I have this in my fridge, in my pantry, because I like to use it a lot. So this is the scallops. And that's the udang dari sababa. I tell you, I swear to God, Sabah has the bre breast, best dry udang. Okay, udang kering by ni. Okay, after that, insert water. So water is about 200 grams. And I was a bit concerned because when I read this, you always should read if you're what, what I mean, doing a recipe either using the cookie dough, which is an integrated recipe platform with your thermal mix, or if you're doing it manually with recipe books, always, always read till the end with the tips and uh, hacks and stuff because there's something pointers that you can or can not, you should not do. And in this case, when I saw, huh, 200 grams of water only. Yeah. So there's a, this is the scale and I'm going to add in the 200 grams of water. And because I know I'll be steaming my prawns as well as my chicken, I'm like, eh, cukup ke? Because normally they would require for you to have at least like a 500 grams. And then I realized, oops, well, the lebih sikit. Hmm. It's all right. The lebih banyak actually, 20 grams, but it's okay. That's all I pop it, pop it. The thing is, because I'm going to be adding in my Chinese cabbage, which is about 700 grams here, which is quite a lot, okay? I'm going to add this in. First, I have to add in the salt before I forget. So I'm going to add in my salt. I'm using Himalaya salt. Some say the Himalaya pink salt is like all a hoax, but I don't know. I still have it and it looks pretty. So the cabbage here will um, release. Betul kasih cakap tu. Dia akan release batu air dari dia. So mungkin mangkali that's the reason why lah yang kau tidak payah guna terlalu banyak air untuk ini. It will release the water and then that will be the water that will help steam your two dishes comfortably. Okay. So, saya akan masukkan, saya punya, check dulu. Uh, I love, right, the fact that I've got this um, little book, book stand, recipe cookbook stand. Add reserved dried shrimp and dried scallops with water and salt to a mixing bowl. Set Varoma dish into position. Oh, okay. This cabbage comes later. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so, what I'm going to do first is I am going to... Put on the lid, remove the measuring cup because now I'm going to place this on top of my mixing bowl, the Varoma. And I've already put in my ginger chicken and we are going to Varoma this. Uh, 20 minutes Varoma on reverse, speed one. Let me just double check. Yes, okay. So let's remove that. So we're going to steam the chicken first and then later on we're going to go and proceed with Vicky. Okay, so this is about 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah, but 200 grams of water because now the cabbage is not there. Well, you know what? I'm going to follow the recipe. Um, the recipes in all the cookbooks has been um, verified, tested. They go through a very intense. Um, they go through a very intense process before they can actually be certified as a Thermomix certified cookbook. It takes about like two, three times going back and forth to Warwick, which is the company that owns uh, Thermomix. And then on what speed? Speed spoon. So I'm on reverse and speed spoon. So. I'm going to do exactly what the book tells me. And in the meantime, while waiting for this to happen, we've got about another 20 minutes. I'm going to pass over the um, spotlight over to Vicky, who's going to be sharing her next dish, which is the walnut sesame dessert. Over to you, Vicky. Hello. Thank you. Right, so I'm going to begin with the walnut and black sesame dessert. Now, Daphne mentioned just then that we have the cookie dough recipe platform and I have already saved the recipe from there and I added it into my collection. So it's in my recipes and I bookmarked it. So I just opened the recipe. Ta-da! Here it is. And it tells me exactly what I need to know. So good job, Mr. T. Mr. T is really cool. So I'm just going to click on start cooking and Mr. T was telling me that I should switch on the oven to toast my walnuts in which I did already just now in the morning so i'm just gonna skip all these steps and then 
Okay, I'm just gonna follow that. Okay, let's go all the way to, let's see, right. Now, we're gonna do something special to the walnuts. Move it in, click next, and then, wow, it's gonna blend it, right? Is this the first time you're doing this uh, walnut sesame dessert? Like how I was doing my first cabbage stew, ginger yeah, chicken. Yeah, just a couple of seconds, like seven. Okay. And then it's done, just seven seconds. And let's see what happens to the walnuts. <gasps> wow, look at that. Just seven seconds and it's like this. Woo. Nice. Right. Now, this to go next and then I'm just going to put in the black sesame seeds. Just like that, and then click next. 50 grams of glutinous flour. I have it here, so I'm just gonna add that in. Next is sugar. Um, the recipe says white sugar, but in my house here, we prefer brown sugar, so it's a mix of white and brown. Just gonna put that in. And then next is water. So Mr. T tells me everything that I need, and I just, you know, just put it in. Very easy. Ta -da. And then it says insert this. Put it in. Click next. All right. Then now it's going to cook for like 10 minutes and I can just leave in here and then cook. That's it. And I can, you know, just do a little bit of a cleaning up and then I can continue chit chatting with my friends. I can clean the house and do whatever. It's so cool, right? Wow, that was fast. I was like trying yeah, to like definitely. settle my um, chicken ginger with me my half cabbage stew uh, before I add in the cabbage. And you are uh, now just uh, waiting for it to cook, right? Yes, correct. Nine minutes and a half. Yeah. Okay, so nine minutes. So in the meantime, again, reminder to viewers at home to stay tuned all the way because we have um, a contest running where... We have the thermo jug as well as two Enviro cloths to be given away. All you have to do is later on log on to our Diva Romas TM6 IG page. I will post a poster over there and then you can comment all your answers there, okay? All right, now, since we've got time to kill before, because I've got like another 20 minutes, you've got about 10 minutes, let's story story. Why don't you say you? We let's have a little chit chat and get to know each other, something beyond Thermomix. First and foremost, you were in Melbourne, you mentioned earlier on, right? What were you doing in Melbourne? Well, I, I was a little while in Melbourne, but mostly in Sydney. So oh. while I was there, I was studying and then I worked a little bit. Yeah, travel around the country, eat a lot, eat a lot. Yeah, and that's when I started to fall in love with coffee. Yeah. Yes. And cooking and eating. And you, I know you love, what, what do you call that? The profession where you actually... A barrister, is it barrister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you took barista. up a course recently, right? Or you've always had it, but you just sort of yeah. like did a refresher? It was a refresher because I did like a more professional course a few years ago when I had the restaurant. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I decided to go for a refresher and then just, you know, do some hand brew and smell of the coffee. It's What's your favorite coffee? Hmm, I would say latte. A latte because at some cafes where the um, baristas are really good, you know, they make like really cool and nice latte art. Yeah. Wow. Do you like uh, coffee? I love coffee, but my husband's like, I'm oh, hantu coffee. Lah. Do you actually grind your own coffee beans using your Thermomix? Have you done that before? I haven't tried actually because nowadays I, I hardly buy any beans, but yeah, good reminder, I should do that. Chuck it into Mr. T and uh, let him blend it for me. Because apparently, uh, I've not tried it too, because we've got like abundance of uh, coffee powder and coffee beans, well, coffee powder and, uh, and coffee packs in our house. So we haven't got like our coffee beans and done the grinding yet. But yeah, the Thermomix is able to grind and mill. So that's something that maybe, you know, others out there who, who are just like Vicky, who love coffee, can also try out. 
Got, you should do it, Vicky, and you should like post it up, and I want to see how it looks like after because we've not done it before. All right, so let's talk about the Chinese be beliefs and culture. So earlier on, you mentioned the fact that you use walnut and uh, red dates are something that Chinese uh, uh, cuisines are also always putting in because it's nice and sweet and it's, it has a nice little color. Uh, you were saying that it's good for blood circulation, right? Yeah, yeah. And walnuts are good. Like yeah. And walnuts is good for the brain. Not only does it look like yeah. a brain. Does it looks like a brain. Oh, yeah. Is there any like pantang that you know about Chinese cooking? Is there any like do's and don'ts with regards to cooking Chinese food first? Cooking Chinese food. Let's see. Okay, for example, like us, like for example, like us Kadazan Dusuns, right? They don't like us yeah. to sing while you're cooking. Um, I guess because uh, they said like you'll marry late, and I'm like, oh, whatever. But I have a feeling it's only because you will be, you won't pay for, you won't pay attention. Like just now when I was talking while measuring, right, and then it went over by twenty grams of water because I was not focused. So I guess that's the actual reason. But yeah, in Chinese cooking, how I did that. I don't, I don't think so, but yeah, I don't think we have that. It's more of like what we eat and how we eat at the dining table. Ah, okay. So speaking of which, let's go into some do's and don'ts on how you can use your chopsticks because this is a an instrument or a tool or a utensil that most, Chi not just Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, we are quite familiar using the chopstick. Um, so we're going to share with you some do's and don'ts of using the chopsticks and it first starts out with ah, make sure you hold it properly is there a way to hold it properly i mean as long as i catch my food i'm fine is there a trick yeah so we, we shouldn't cross it it shouldn't be crossed you know and um some believe that if you hold it high up here at the other at the end you, you marry late and you marry far away so you should hold it like down and I think the logic to the that is just simply physics, right? If too, too short is so hard, too long also is a bit susa. So middle, ah, some more they give us all that, that, that uh, reasoning behind it, which doesn't make sense. Like how are you going to marry long or late if you, and even if you do marry long or late, long doesn't sound right, but yes, later on in your life, right. it's fine. So yeah, so you do it from the middle, right? Don't cross. Yeah. I've got a way, but it doesn't, you know, because I see some people, oh, this is the way, this is the technique on how you use your chopsticks or how you use it properly. But as long as you don't cross and it's comfortable for you, that's fine. Okay. So you have like one, which you like sort of hold as a base. And then the other one, you sort of angle it so that you can pick up your foods. Okay. So that's one. All right. Now, the next one is do use a chopstick rest. I don't have a chopstick rest, so what I normally do is I just place it like slightly above when I'm not using it. I put it on my plate so that it rises, it doesn't touch the surface. I think that's the only reason why. But if you do have, like, you know, a restaurant and they've got like that, that tiny Chinese rest, uh, Chinese chopstick rest, not Chinese, but chopstick rest, then you can place it there because that's the proper etiquette. Am I right or am I wrong, Vicky? Is there a reason? Yeah, for you're that? right. You're right. But yeah, I, I don't really use it either. I put it on top of the plate or the bowl. Yeah. yeah. But if you are, you know, sometimes you go into like those fancy dim sum restaurants and they have it there, use it because yeah. that's the purpose for it. Okay. Yes. All right. So another one is do get your food properly. So if you are in a reunion dinner or you're with your friends eating Chinese cuisine, make sure when you take your food, you don't take the food from the shared dish and eat it straight away because macam one, it's not hygienic lah, and two, it's a bit kurang ajar. So what you want to do is you take it from the shared dish, put it on your bowl or onto your plate and baru tiang or baru makan. Betul tak, Vicky? Ada lagi tak? What else? What are some of the no-nos about using the, um, you know, when you're taking food off? Or what about passing it to another person? Um, well, as long as you don't like lick it, like uh, lick it and then pick up the food and then give it to someone else. That's like such a turn off. Like what? I mean, that's just yeah. gross lah. I mean, like it's common sense. Like, would you want someone, would you receive food from someone who just like, uh, right. So pass it in a bowl. So put it into a bowl and then pass it, pour it, pass the food into that bowl to that person. Because sometimes you want to respect your elders, especially if it's like 
someone elderly or whatever and they say, Ma, Ma, sit fun, sit fun. Wah, che, tiba-tiba beli cakap Cina. Ha! So you put it more bold. You don't lah put like that. Unless you like husband and wife lah. Kalau husband and wife, okay, that one can. Because korang cuma mulut pun kan. So you put like that. Ha, ah, baby sayang ha. Like that lah. That's the only exemption. Right, Vicky? But yeah, other than that, yeah, I think yeah. it's quite gross. If like, I'm going to be passing it to Vicky and Vicky's like, no, thank you. Especially now, COVID. No, COVID, COVID. No can do. All right, the next one is... Uh, do not stick it upwards. Why is that, Vicky? When you when you like, well, don't poke it in. Yeah, because you know Chinese people with some bayang, right? And then the uh-huh. incense are like sticking up like this. So if we chuck it in a bowl or in our rice like that, it, yeah. it symbolizes that. So yeah, it's like a pantang, you know. It's, Apparently, don't, don't do um, it looks like you know how um, some Chinese they go and pray in the temple and they've got their incense sticks. So it's like, and you use those incense sticks to um, to pray to your loved ones, right? So they do that. So it looks or it's it's symbol or it resembles that. So I guess that's another reason. I don't know. I I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Another thing is um, why it's not playing. Oops. Don't stab your food. So that's quite similar to what we were saying about don't stick your chopsticks into your food, but don't stab onto it. Is there any other reason why then? not to stab your food <laughs> well i i do stab into the fish ball i do stab into the fish ball but um yeah only when you can't like grab it then you can stab but <laughs> probably not good again i got all yeah. this from good old mr google internet okay so that's apparently one of the reasons i guess it just doesn't look very refined if you're like eh, eh, eh. Yeah, you, you don't do that with your right, spoken yeah. spoon, also, right? Because I guess it's just more for yeah, you know, finesse, finesse. I say. Another one is don't use broken chopsticks. I, you know, sometimes they give it to you if you're ordering in or you take it, you've got takeaway, and they give you those wooden spoons, and they always do that, which is also apparently a bad no-no. If you're eating sushi, and they do that, you shouldn't be doing that. Can't remember what was the reason behind yes. it. But the reason why I used to do that was because I wanted to remove the splint from the wood of the um, yes, chopstick. I, I, I do that too. You know, yeah. like remove but apparently it. it's like a no-no. Well, if, if there's any broken ones, then don't use it. I, I'm not quite sure why, but it's apparently seen as a bad premonition, apparently. So if you see a broken chopstick, don't. I think it's just for health reasons. I mean, safety reasons. Like, what if you like cut yourself, right? I, that's the only yeah, thing that yeah. logically it makes sense. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Okay. It's true. Right? But okay. How many more minutes is your um your walnut sesame dessert going well, for? Well, Mr. T just called. He was just like beep beep just oh, then. Okay. So done. Yeah. That was fast. Yeah, it's all cooked. It's all cooked. So we're gonna click next and see what it says. Okay, keep mm-hmm. the measuring cup inserted, keep it on and then yeah, we're just gonna blend it. So everything is cooked now, and I'm just gonna blend it for like three minutes. Okay, another three minutes. Okay, start. Three minutes. So the timing is already set, mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna turn it to speed ten. And just a word of caution: if you are blending, you want to do it slowly. Um, only because, I mean, it's very powerful. The motor of the TM6, it goes from 40 RPM all the way to 10,700 RPM. It's very, very powerful. It's frictionless, which means there's no heat generated. Um, however, you know, we want to... We want to sustain our mixing knife, right? Um, a friend of ours, which is also a colleague of ours in Thermomix Malaysia, her name is Fiza. She actually owns a TM31, which is two models after, uh, before the TM6. And it's been around for about, what, 12, 13 years? And it's still functioning. So if you purchase your unit, inshallah, God willing, your unit will stay with you until your anak pun boleh pakai, you know? Uh, but you want to sustain, you want to maintain. Nah. So in that case, when I was saying about the blending part, you don't want to blend all the way like, oh, terus masuk then. You go like slow, slow. You know, like when you're driving a car, so you masuk speed, you tak masuk speed five straight away. You masuk speed one, speed two, speed three. Of course, those young drive auto cars then, <laughs> it, it will do it for you automatically lah. It's not as if you go terus pecut. But you start slow and steady. You warm up dulu dia. Baru kau bagi dia zas ten. So in this case, she is blending her walnut sesame dessert. And it's great for your brain. Sesame is apparently, well, black sesame is great for you. Uh, if you want to maintain those black shiny locks. 
in this case you know what i've got like a lot of white hair i mean with this extended mco there's no way i'm sorry my gum suddenly hurts um there's no way that we can go to the saloons so you know i've decided vicky i'm gonna share it with you and to all at home right now i'm gonna leave my hair gray i'm gonna leave my hair gray and be proud of it you too Oh, you can't hear me because it's too loud. Okay, so I'm just going to talk, okay? Do you notice that I'm also wearing gold? I'm wearing my gold Cheong Sam. Initially, when Vicky and I were saying, should we like wear a Cheong Sam? And I said, yeah, but I can't fit into it. And initially I said, okay, I'm just going to wear my old long Cheong Sam. And then I couldn't breathe. And I said, I'm going to leave it unzipped. But then it just looked horrifying because then it was all on there. So this Cheong Sam is actually a Cheong Sam that I wore when I was uh, pregnant with Isabel. So it's on a larger size, um, so now it can fit me because obviously I'm larger than before. And I'm wearing, so it's gold, and then I've got my gold earrings from uh, Rupa store, which is a friend of mine, because gold symbolizes fat. So you see, I've got fat ears, uh -huh. not fat gamot, uh. fat, uh -huh. to good luck punya. So Chinese, they always talk about symbolism. They always talk about how it symbolizes or represents certain things and elements. So red, I wore red, but then because I've also got a bit of a crack on my, um, the uh, corner of my mouth is painful. Let me know, Vicky, when you're done, okay? Because then if not, I'm just going to go chatting about. So just give me the okay once yours is done, because I know she can't really hear me because it's really loud. Is it okay or done? Not yet? Oh, done, okay. Okay, now she's gonna unmute herself. There yeah. you go. Yeah, he's all done. Woo! I'm to see what Mr. T did. Right, so it's still kind of hot. That's why it's like a red color here. Mm -hmm. So I'm wow, look at that. I'm so excited. See? Oh, you've got your typical bowl, that Chinese bowl that you're gonna be pouring your one sesame. So we're gonna show it to the audience, okay? Yes, wow. I do. Every Chinese family must have this, all right? <gasps> Look yeah, at yeah. that creamy goodness. Like, so nutritious. Yeah, you don't have to like go to the restaurant to have this. You know what would be really nice with that? You know those balls? What balls are those? Those glutinous balls? Yes, glutinous Boba. rice balls. So how do you know that we like that? We do like that. So it's a very like a traditional like a dessert on mm -hmm. like occasions special occasions and things like that so i do have like i prepared three oh, so I'm just gonna, like, oh wow i was right we didn't plan this guys fyi oh that's so pretty and it's like nice and pink so it sort of pops like that you've got like your black purplish colored walnut sesame oh, yeah. dessert and then you've got yeah, like, but, yeah, yeah. So make sure you take a picture before then... you before you eat it all up okay and what else is that um, I've got some sun fun over here. Mm. So like, you know, I'm 40% non-Chinese, so. <laughs> oh, that's have, lovely. Like, a little bit of sun fun in there. So, you know, it's really like cool and yeah, like a great dessert to have. Or I can have some flowers on top, you know, just. It's called Clitoria be flowers yeah. because this is beautiful for you to have like natural blue tinge color. And all this, why I kept calling it Clitoris for some horrible reason but yes so before you dig in take a picture send it over to me because i do want to post it up thank you so much vicky i'm now going to pop over back to the living room because i'm going to go and check on my cabbage stew and see if my ginger chicken has already been done because now i'm going to change it with me prawn so just chat a bit with our viewers and then um i'll see you later 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 Great. I'm I'm so excited to see your dishes. Ah, all this food is so great. They're like, you know, wonderful for special occasions like birthday or maybe some other gathering. So yeah, we, we like Tang Yuan. Tang Yuan was that pink little thing that I had. I don't know if you can see that pink ball over here. Yeah, so yeah, Tang Yuan is very special and Chinese dessert and we like it. So I just put it a little bit here in the black sesame with some flower flowers just for decoration because I like pretty things. Yeah, and then we can just, you know, try it. So Okay, small, so it like is done. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the ginger chicken from this Varoma um, dish. It's a bit panas. So I'm not sure how I'm going to... 
Oh dear. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch it to the prawns that I had prepared earlier on. Uh, but before that, I'm going to just let that set aside first. Ada panas sikit. And then I'm going to garnish this. Oh, panas sangat. Okay, never mind. I'll figure it out. I'll let that cool off for a bit. Now I'm going to prepare. I'm going to add in the... Um, what I have to do now is... See, again, I'm doing this like blow by blow with all of you. So, my scallops and my udang kering is done. And now I'm going to... Uh, remove the butterfly waste. Do I have to remove the butterfly waste? It says here, add reserve, set da 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 da, steaming fish. Check if chicken is cooked. It's cooked. So that looks fine. And then remove aroma and transfer steamed chicken and set aside. Fine. Add cabbage to mixing bowl. So now with my, my son over here doing his Freddy, Five Nights at Freddy, I am going to add the cabbage to the mixing bowl. And then I'm going to set the Varoma dish back into position to insert uh, my prawns, which will be also set inside the Varoma dish. Okay, so I'm going to put this all in. Do I need to... It doesn't say that to remove the um, butterfly. Okay, so leave the butterfly food waste there. That's the only thing about like cooking manually. You, especially now that I'm doing like three dishes all at the same time, right? is that you want to just really ensure that you follow the steps as per the instructions. Uh, the maximum for this mixing bowl is about 2.2 litres, but what's going to happen here is it will sort of like, you know how cabbage is, it will lie you and it will fall, it will, it will go down. But the maximum is that. The only thing is I might need to add on the cabbage as we go along because it requires about 700 grams of cabbage, Chinese cabbage. And this was actually about 600, but I am filling it up already to the brim, so I don't want to risk it. I'm just going to um, let this like sort of lie you while we are cooking the rest of the... Um, do I need to chop up on water? Set Baroma? Nope, I don't. Now I'm going to cover this. Again, because the cabbage will have a lot of water content in it. So as we cook it, as it steams, because there's a bit of water still left over from um, earlier on. Um, then I, uh, then I'll, I'll add in the rest of the cabbage uh, slowly as we progress. So I am going to remove the ginger chicken and place it aside. Put it aside. I'm going to replace it with the prepared prawns, the goji berries, the red dates, all the goodness. I'm going to put it on top of my mixing bowl. And then I am going to cook it for another 10 minutes. Oop. Cover it up first. 10 minutes on Varoma. And we're also going to go into speed spoon on reverse. Okay, so let's put this in 10 minutes. On 10 minutes on Varoma. And then I'm going to enable the reverse mode. Just press the button and just go on to spoon. Okay. So this is for another 10 more minutes. But what happens now is... I'm going to make it for about 5 minutes, I think. Because I want to add in my reserved um, cabbage. So I'm just going to reduce it to about 5 minutes. And in the meantime, I am going to go back to the studio... And then I am going to share a little bit more about the Thermomix whilst waiting for it. So I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so this is the recipe for the cabbage stew. Again, you can get it all from the cookbook. Um, Another way of how you can choose to use your um, thermal mix is multi-layering cooking. Um, one of the recipes that you can actually do to try this out is in your Perfection with Thermal Mix in 7 Days. And it has the Hainanese chicken rice which I spoke about previously with Vicky. And it has all these wonderful menus that you can try out all in 7 days just to familiarize yourself with the Thermal Mix. So let's talk a little bit more about the Thermal Mix while waiting for my 5 minutes. So I'm just going to time myself. 
and then I'll wait for another five minutes, gonna pop in the rest of the cabbage there just because I didn't want to overflow my mixing bowl, okay? So Thermomix has been around since um, a very, very long time. It's about 138 years old. It started out as a blender. So yes, kalau ramai orang cakap ni mahal lah blender ni, tapi dia bukan blender sahaja. Yes, mula-mula dia start out back in the 1960s as a blender, but it has evolved so much so technologically wise, model size, the size itself into what it is today, which is the Thermomix TM6, the latest model. It is, uh, um, it's, it's just revolutionary um, and you should really find out a little bit more from your advisors who may have invited you to the show or from me, myself, if you are watching this over my own platform and uh, learn a little bit more about how you can do all these wonderful things and features and cook and prep all from your all-in-one smart kitchen, okay? There are three ways to purchase your thermal mix. Uh, one is to pay the full amount, which is 7,188, but we've got a 200 ringgit discount, which um, I'm not quite sure how long they're gonna continue. Um, the discount, this is only from Thermomix Malaysia headquarters, okay? So there's a 200 ringgit, so now the price is 6,988. But heads up, guys, there will be an increase in price here in Malaysia, that's all I can safely say because it has already started increasing its price in Australia and certain parts of the country uh, of, of the world. But here in Malaysia, there is going to be a price increase. So that's just a heads up. How much? We're not sure. When exactly? We're not sure. But there is a price increase. So 6988 is the full payment that you can do either by credit card or via cash and you get yourself a free cookbook. So that's a little free gift that you get. Or you can also choose for option number two, which is to pay using your credit card and is zero interest free. Um, there's a few banks that you can choose from and different installment plans from six months all the way to 24 months, depending on which bank you're using. And the third option is if you don't want to lock your credit card payment um, for the whole amount of 6988, then there is a third option which you put in a deposit of 2988 and the balance of 4000 ringgit you can choose to pay by via installment recurring payment of six to about 18 months. Again, dif uh, depending on which bank you're using, I think you can use all banks, right Vicky? Let's just unmute her so that she can, we can just get her clarification. Yes, yes, correct. Right? It's debit card. Mm -hmm. Debit cards are allowed as long as it is Visa or Master. There you go. And another little pointer, which I need to remind people, because this is something that Vicky always tells us. When you are using the debit card or you're using your, uh, that for your option to pay, you have to make sure that it's allowing online transaction or something like that, Vicky. Perhaps you can give us a little yes, bit more online payment, elaboration. Yeah, online payments. Mm -hmm. mm. Especially for debit cards because it is cash, right? It's considered like cash. So it is always good to go into your bank account online, you know, choose the setting for the card and make sure you choose. I am going to use it for online transactions, online banking and shopping and how much I'm going to set the limit. So always check your card and then Use yeah, it. so that could be a problem when some of our sales advisors who may be watching us right now where they have a little pr problems with the payment, so that could be an option, um, a reason behind it. So make sure you get your customer's details and make, make sure that the debit card has permission or authorization for it to go through an online transaction, okay? So the Thermomix is not just an expensive blender. It has 24 and more counting features, okay? So we're, we're counting this. That day, we just sort of redid or redo this um, flip chart poster because it was 20 and now it's 24 and it's growing. Um, so you saw earlier on how she blended, she grinded, I'm stirring, I'm steaming, we're weighing. There's so many features of the Thermomix and it's all there. One Thermomix does it all. The only thing that you probably need in your kitchen is the oven because the oven is your TM6 or your Thermomix's best friend. It's your perfect kitchen assistant for any lifestyle doesn't matter if you are single or young or an elderly couple or someone with a small family or a big family, it is perfect for you. You can make, basically create all these wonderful uh, fresh meals all the time. I make my lemonade, I make my orange juice, I make my carrot juice as and when and like what we just shared earlier on with Vicky, we can make like, you know, a, a simple, very nutritious drink in just what? How many seconds was that, Vicky? Can't remember now. I think it was uh, less than a minute. Right? Just about a minute to make it smooth, yeah. Mm -hmm. But of course you just needed, no, that was for the walnut. The walnut and sesame, she had to bake it for about 15 minutes prior to popping it all in, but that's another easy thing. But yeah, that's why I said the oven is your best friend. Um, it also has the cookie dough, so 
both of us used manual recipes from, uh, oh no, she used it from the Cookie Doo. So the Cookie Doo has over 70,000 integrated recipes. So she showed this Cookie Doo recipe and we both also did it uh, manually using the cookbooks or the community res uh, recipes that we have um, among all Thermomix users. Um, when I first got mine last year, it was about 50,000 recipes in the cookie dough. Now it's 70,000 and it is growing, okay? So you can knead perfect breads, perfect doughs all the time because of the perfect temperature where your yeast needs to be activated with 37 degrees Celsius. You know for sure that it will jadi one. Memang jadi punya. I've got bakers, professional bakers in my group and they're all going like, oh my God, I love it. I love it so much so that they've become a sales advisor so that they can have and earn their free unit um, of another TM6 because one unit is not enough, you know. So yes, find out a little bit more about how you can also earn a free unit from your advisors who invited you here, okay. Um, we can make homemade sorbet homemade ice cream, which is really, really healthy, just make it made by frozen fruits. Um, it's also low temperature healthy cooking, so I spoke about it, about using olive oil and how it's safe. Um, it won't detoxify your oil because uh, it's not gonna like overheat it and your vegetables are gonna come out really, really beautiful and it won't kill the nutrition inside because you're not overcooking it. Um, so there's always perfect temperature control, perfect texture every time and you can cook delicious meals in four layers. In fact, like, if you're not cooking soup below, you can cook potatoes or rice and above you can be steaming your proteins and your um, vegetables. Uh, you will get the perfect temperature all the time. There's no more but aga aga. So it's great for all these wonderful things that you want to do. For instance, if you want to do slow cook, you can slow cook for about eight hours into the perfect temperature. You can make your own cheese and yogurt using the fermentation mode. It's just amazing. I've tried the sous vide salmon as well as the steak. It is the bomb. And you can do this up to about 12 hours. It's just so delicious. So there's so many benefits of cooking with the thermal mix. Um, find out again from your uh, sales advisor in invited you here because we would love, love, love to do a full demo with you. Hopefully we can do it physically, but unfortunately with extended MCO, that's just not going to happen right now. But we will have, be having um, closed virtual demos for our interested parties, all right? So I am going to head over back to the living room and uh, I'll guess uh, Vicky, uh, I just want to say thank you. I know you have to go and have lunch later on, but I just want to say thank you and do take pictures and before you eat your walnut sesame seed. Is that okay? <laughs> Alright, yes, I will. I'll send you some pictures actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And Mang Mang Sik. I'll see you. Mang Mang Sik. Enjoy. Alright, I'm going to head over to the living room and I'm going to complete my cabbage stew and prawn drunken meal. Uh, prawn, prawn drunken prawns. Jumpa di sana. Tell me when. Okay, so I made this five minutes purposely because I wanted to, um, it's only half of the cooking time to varoma my prawns. Again, this is the drunken prawns, which I added a little bit of rice wine. This is the rice wine. I didn't put in too much, um, simply because my kids will be eating in just a bit. And as I suspected, the cabbage has dah layuda because of the cooking. So I'm going to add in now the remainder, remaining of the other cabbage. And it's just nice and basa already. Uh, so one of the reasons why I was a little bit like worried about if to cook the idea ni because 200 grams and then you're like you are steaming it or putting in the varoma for more than uh, 15 minutes um, my assumption was correct then this is the this time my assumption was correct that's why you just follow the recipe according to the book where it will sort of um, all the water content from the cabbage is the door can you please put off the volume of your freddy fight nice at freddy and we're going to do the same thing for another five more minutes oh wait i'm going to put in the lid on top and then i'm going to cook this for another five more minutes okay just nice actually i wanted to make sure that this cooking show would be just about an hour yes darling nothing you call me and then you say no nothing okay so another five more minutes on varoma dan sekali lagi kepada sesiapa yang baru sahaja join i'm Maybe you might be a little bit too late in the game to join the contest, but it's okay because you can always watch the replay and you can answer the questions that I have for you, which I will be sharing with you in just a bit. 
um, basically earlier on, Vicky and I had shared um, her drink, which is the red date and pumpkin seed drink, which was done in under a minute. That was found in the Tasty Asia cookbook. And then I continued with my drunken prawn, as well as my cabbage stew, as well as my ginger chicken, which is here and it is cooked. And I'm just going to garnish it with a little bit of spring onion, just so that it gives a little bit of color. And because we're all want to be putting it up and posting it up over our Instagram, because it's not, it's not verified or valified. Valified. Is there such a word? Until you put it up on the gram, right? Ah, yeah. Macam itu, by itu, gang. Oh, vilified. There you go. So, verified and vilified. There you go. I'm going to put that in. And I am giving away a thermo jug to my Diva Roma sales advisors. All they have to do is go and check out the post, which will be posted right after this live show. Um, and answer away. Make sure you give me a PM me your screenshot of your friends or family who you invited in. And uh, for those viewers at home, I'm also giving away two Norwex microfiber cloths, which is the bomb. Okay, it's worth 89 ringgit per cloth. And the question, I'll be giving it to you in just a bit once this is done. Okay, so we've got another three more minutes. So this is the joy of cooking with the thermal mix. Um, a lot of people have asked me, um, what else can it do? Um, and I would personally prefer to do a physical demo. Or if you are somewhere in Sabah, Sarawak, in Johor, in Penang, Kedah, we've actually got some of our sales advisors there too who are more than willing to do a physical demo once we are able to travel and once it's safe. You know, very quickly, I'm just going to say about um, there's that quite a controversial white flag campaign that has been carried out by certain communities. And but some people are saying it's not good. Uh, I personally think that, you know, for someone who needs help and who is reaching out for help, why not help them? You know, it's really, really crazy times, very challenging times. And I know even for the most positive, most optimistic person like myself, who's always constantly thinking of the brighter side of things, it, it's putting a, put a, putting a bit of a damper. Yesterday when we found out that it's going to be extended, I told the kids and my kids were like, oh man, you know, they miss their friends, they can't go out at all. At least my husband and I are able to have some reprieve about, you know, going to get our groceries and stuff. Yes, my love. Would you like to tell everyone what this is? It's so annoying. The father bought it for him and that's the only sound. Can you imagine that King Kong and Godzilla have the same sound? Check it out. So annoying. But whatever keeps the boy happy. Isidore's is such a happy boy, aren't you, Isidore? Okay, since he's there, I'm just acknowledging the fact that my son is here. But yes, it's whatever keeps you guys sane, do it. Um, reach out to a friend who you feel might be hitting low. Uh, be it in emotions or finances, um, a lot of people are losing jobs or getting a huge pay, uh, pay cut. So I think we really, 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 really need to live and breathe that hashtag that netizens are all posting up since we first started with the MCO 1.0. Kita jaga kita, really, really kena kita jaga kita, you know. It's all about community living, guys. I think this is a wake-up call for everyone all around the world. But it's really, really sad. The only thing that gets to me right now is the fact that we were doing so well. You know, Malaysia was doing so well in terms of curbing it. We were like one digit sahaja, but now like it's just crazy. It just keeps on rising. So we don't know if this method is working. And it's a little bit unfair when people say, um, ah, selangor lah, kalau nak buangkan COVID, you know, they make jokes about that. Kita buangkan selangor sahaja. You have to bear in mind also lah. Selangor is um, it's a city. It's, a, it's, it's where Kuala Lumpur is also surrounded by it. So it is um, the main city uh, that is around Malaysia. We've got kilangs here, we've got factories, we've got um, a higher population compared to, let's say, the rural areas in the kampung because drang berjauhan gitu kan. Drang macam mind your own business. Kalau tengok mami saya tu, sana kampung tu. She just like does her own business. She doesn't like travel bit. She just stays where she is. So it's quite unfair for you guys to say that it's you know because of Selangor per se. I think it's safe for me to say 
that somebody shouldn't have made the elections go on in September last year. Was it September or October, August? Because that's when there was a spike. Okay, enough politic talk. But I just wanted to say what I had to say because this is my channel. Wow. And we should be able to give constructive feedback and our opinions when it matters. All right. <laughs> so, Dacia. So, that is my... I'm going to remove my thing over here so that you guys can see it. My book. Dacia. It's a bit panas, so I'm going to place my ginger uh, chicken there. And then I've got my drunken prawns that looks very, very delicious. And inside, I've also cooked up my cabbage stew, which is basically kopunya, kopunya sayur la yang help to... Um, And that's the cabbage stew. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to eat it. I've got a tooth extraction surgery done a couple of days ago, so there's still a bit of search or some the the apa gitu kau macam kena jahit bah sini setiap bones a bit bangkak and everything. Um, but I think I can try out. Alamak, I don't have a plate. See, we just talked about etiquette about using your chopsticks. So I'm going to use my lid because this is like multifunctioning, and I'm going to try out my. Chicken, ginger, ginger chicken. Hopefully it's soft. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mmm. So, so perfect. Oh my God. It's exactly how I like it. And it's so soft. I'm going to leave this because it's nice and, and chantik because I want to take a picture. But can I just try out the... <laughs> Cabbage stew made from scallops and dried shrimp. Mmm, lovely. That's perfect. I'm going to place this in my thermal server. And lunch is served because I've got rice cooking. And I'm just going to quickly head over to the studio and I'm going to get my daughter to do this for me. Belle, can you do this for Mama and pour it in? I'm just going to end the show. Can you just put this in? Yeah, I know, right? It's so yummy. Okay, can you pour it in here? Okay, while I go back to the studio. And just to wrap up our show for today. Careful, okay? Hey, hello. All right, so I am back and we are going to now give you the questions for our giveaway. First and foremost, for the two EnviroCloths that will be given to our lucky viewers at home, all you have to do is head down over to our Divaromas TM6 Instagram page. Okay, so it's D-V-A-R-O-M-A-S-T-M-6 Instagram page, which is our official Diva Roma team Instagram page. And I will be posting up a new post later on with the questions and then you can comment over there. Um, the question is, why do Chinese believe walnuts are good for? Okay, so according to the show, why do Chinese believe walnuts are good for? All right, so the first two correct answers of uh, participants who are living in Malaysia will walk home or will be posted a environment enviro cloth for to them okay so itu satu dan kepada semua diva sales advisors mummy pon yang saya mencintai the question is for you to earn or to get this 450 ml jug make sure first and foremost is you have to screenshot the comment of your invited guests who had watched over either facebook youtube instagram or twitter yes we're even on twitter and your question is Give me three do's or don'ts or and three and or do's 
do's and don'ts of using your chopsticks. Ah, nanti saya akan letak itu question saya nak itu new post, okay? Nanti kamu jawab, okay? Yes, so only one lucky winner. Initially, I was gonna say to you guys, right? I said like, orang yang dah menang spatula yang uh, mami baru bagi tu, tak ya. Okay, but I thought I'll just leave it open for all of you guys to watch because you guys are fantastic. And speaking of which, we will be having another group virtual show, cooking show, right? And let me just see if we've got it on my screen. Oh, shoot. And um, hmm, let me see if I can just get it out. Ah, yeah, ini ini. Okay, I can't. Hmm. No, I wanted to. I can't see my. Yeah, um, it came out. Oh, there you go. All right, slideshow. Doo -doo -doo. All right, so PKPD, 3.30 afternoon show taking place at our Diva Roma's Facebook page. It's at 3.30 today. PKPD Dua <laughs> is a play of word because Papa Kami Pandai Di Dapur. So the boys will be back. They are hilarious, guys. And they'll be sharing uh, with us some um, delicious... Mama with a fusion twist to their cuisine that they're going to be sharing with us. So that's at 3.30 p.m. And the next day, tomorrow, we'll be having our kids having their 10.30 in the morning Sunday show. And this time we'll be using our junior chefs um, using the thermal mix, okay? Is a door mama is talking. All right, so be sure to catch them and join us then. Till then, my name is Daphne Iking, and I've it's been a pleasure having Vicky uh, joining us for my cooking show. And to next week, we will still have the same time, about 10.30 to 11. Just be on the uh, lookout for our posters. Um, till then, stay safe, guys, and just make sure if you've got friends who are feeling a little bit depressed, be there for them, all right? Signing up. Thanks, Vicky.